How often do you guys hear stories from the older generation talking about, I bought an engine for $25 back in, you know, 70s, 80s, 60s, whatever. Well, I hate to break it to you guys, today's engine, that's $25, well, $250, is the LS engine, and that's why hot riders have flocked to it like they have. The LS engine is available in a lot of different options, anywhere from the 4.8 to the 7.0, and anything in between. The aftermarket has really taken to these things, since, you know, it is a more modern small block Chevy. And if you're an oddball, there are even a few options for the front wheel drive guys if you're interested in just something that, you know, most guys really don't care about. But what makes the LS engine actually so lovable by so many guys? Is it a dollar per horsepower, the ease of use, the cheap install, the weight savings? I don't think so. To be honest with you, I think I have a better option. But before we get into that, hit that subscribe button and let's talk about the LS. So while most people would brag about the 460 pound aluminum blocks, we're not going to discuss that here because that's something that I can't really argue with unless you're spending big bucks on a small block Chevy. What we're going to look at here is the LM7, the LQ9, the iron variants of the LS engines that you're typically going to find in a junkyard. So looking deep into this engine, what we're actually going to find is the larger cam core support. And what I mean by that is the LS has a larger cam typically than a small block. What I mean by that is the Gen 3 and Gen 4 LS engines typically have a larger cam core size than a Gen 1 small block Chevy. What that's going to do is allow you to add more pressure and more lift to your cam without worrying about breaking or snapping the cam. This can be achieved too with a small block Chevy by alternating the cam to something like a billet cam or something with a stronger core. That said, the stock LS geometry and valve strain setup allows for cheap cams to work just as well as very expensive small block Chevy Gen 1 cams. So the other major advantage that the LS engine has is the heads. The factory heads flow extremely well. So looking at factory heads is where we really see the difference. We're going to use Hot Rod's numbers for this, so I'll put a link in the description down below if you guys want to read that article. But they did a full shootout on the LS heads, and I want to talk about the most basic head, which came first. So the 241 heads are a perfect example of why the LS really took over when it did. In 98, it dropped the 241 heads. These 241 heads flowed, ironically, right next to their name at 240 CFM. This is huge. This is what you would pay big bucks for, like a set of uh, Edelbrock Pontiac heads. Those things are $2,500 and they flow roughly the same. So, I mean, the price savings you're getting here is insane if you consider that. And if you're not a Pontiac guy, that's kind of like buying a set of AFRs. You know, it's also important to note too that the LS guys can improve this and they actually have improved this in the later gens like the L99 and the LS3. With those heads flowing north of 300 CFM, really along the lines of something like the Tiger Pontiac heads. But let's look at the LM7, because that's really what we care about here. That's what we're gonna see on the street more often than not. And looking at the LM7, we really notice that, I mean, it's a 350 horsepower engine. That's not much more, if any more, than what you've got in your tree fitty. So the horsepower per dollar really is an uncomfortable conversation for most guys. They see the idea that an LS is $1,200 to swap in. And while it might be actually entirely possible to make that happen, you know, and guys like Driveway Engineer really show what's possible to do on a budget. And if you guys want to check that out, I'll put that in the description down below as well. You know, but you also want to consider what you have in your car. If you have a small block Chevy, if you have a big block, if you have a 440, a 318, a 455 Pontiac, Buick, Olds, whatever. If you have something that runs and works, consider that first. And I'm going to tell you why. So the average 5.3 you're going to run into on a Saturday night is going to be something like a Sloppy Sage 2 cam. Uh, maybe stock heads, probably a truck intake, probably headers, light stall, 3,000 RPM stall, something like that. This car is going to run 420 horsepower, maybe have 400 foot-pounds of torque. It's not going to be earth-shattering numbers by any means, especially for a small block Chevy guy. If you've got the inclination to do an LS swap, you've got the inclination to do a cam swap. So we're going to pull that small block Chevy, we're going to throw in an XC268 cam, maybe a set of $1,000 profiler heads, um, and those are aluminum, by the way, and we can even downsize the chamber down to like 62cc if you feel like. Uh, throw on a RPM intake, and boom, we are 420-ish horsepower, more than likely, um, in a weekend. With direct bolt-on stuff that we don't have to worry about. That's it. I mean, you have the option to build horsepower in your car, you just gotta choose to do it. The dollar per horsepower can be significantly less if you allow it to be. That being said, if you've got a roller, dude, throw an LS in there, call it good, and just get running. But speaking of just throwing an LS in there and getting running, mile per gallon is a large conversation that most people have with the LS. People are always saying that, well, I can drive my car and get 20 miles a gallon. I hate to break it to you guys, I do the same thing in my 91 Camaro that's got exhaust, headers, tune, and a bunch of other work. 
and I beat on it, and I get 22 miles to the gallon. What most people don't consider is it's not just the engine, it's not just the fuel delivery, it's the transmission. A lot of these guys that are going to an LS and staying with their TH400 or something like that just really aren't seeing the gain here, and they're wondering why. Well, it's your gearing. If you're unfamiliar with the TH400 or really any non-overdrive transmission, um, one to one is gonna be the final gear ratio. So that means if you have 373 gears, you're gonna be running 373 gears on your final gear. So if you're running on the road, that's really gonna kinda suck after a long time and probably suck fuel as well. Consider something like a 204R or a 700R4, for instance. The 204R has a final gear ratio of 0.67. What that's gonna give you is a ratio of something like uh, 249 to one. And what that's going to do is drop your RPM by about 33%. I don't care what fuel delivery system you have, that's a big deal. You know, really, it's not uncommon for guys running 400 plus horsepower with the 204R to get 14 miles a gallon combined, and that's with guys like me driving. We beat these cars to death, and the gas mileage usually shows. And if you're really stubborn and you want to keep that old small block Chevy or something like that, what you can do is throw EFI on it, get yourself another 5-10%, uh, and at 10 or 15 miles a gallon, 5-10% is a big deal. People often misconstrue what's possible with the LS swap. Yes, you can gain more power than some stock configurations. That being said, with similar mods and similar power made in like a, a small block Ford, a small block Chevy, Mopar, Pontiac, I don't care. Similar mods will probably yield similar goals and similar end results. After all, flow is kind of flow. It just so happens the LS flows a little better from factory. If you're interested in building classic machines to compete with this modern technology, go ahead and subscribe because we are building stuff all the time to compete with these things. Have a good one and I will see you on the road.